Good morning, Mike Winkler here, and I want to take a minute and talk about the day in the life of someone who uses both resilient systems and Q radar, right? And I want to talk a minute, a couple of use cases about the use of putting both products in the same space. Um, we're going to use in our example, Jeremy, the security analyst. So Jeremy has an awful lot to do during his day, right? You've got uh, malware data coming in from McAfee, Semantic, or the similar, and you've got firewall data and things coming in from your proxies, and you have certain advanced systems like a FireEye or a Blue Coat that make decisions about what the security data means all feeding in, right? And just to make his day complicated, we add in the user data and threat analytics feeds like, you know, X, like X-Force. Now, this is easy because Jeremy sends all this to QRadar, and QRadar is going to take all these intelligence sources and all these sources of data and give him a single pane of glass to look at this in. Okay, all well and good. The problem to that answer is sometimes Jeremy picks up the phone or has an email or Marge walks in from accounting, right? Um, and Jeremy very, very seldom is only going to be doing one thing at a time. So this is the value of workflow, right? Not just a technical tool like QRadar, which is quite good, but something that allows him to do good workflow on top of it. Now, the theme here is sometimes the response to a technical problem, the proper response isn't going to be a technical answer, right? It's going to be with people or with process. So the value of what we get out of resilient systems is it combines these, right? Technology, people, and process. I have automation of tasks. Sometimes this means the machine's doing things without involving a person. Sometimes this means Jeremy having a lot of good tools so he can click a button and uh, the system knows who the proper people are to send things off to, right? And those people, be it another technical guy, be it a manager, be it a vendor, that we have the correct address book full of people who are in place so that the system knows the correct people to contact. And in this way, it will always go on in a timely fashion, right? We have the historical context of an incident, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit in the next slide, but the gist is, is this a repeating problem? Is this a user that has a lot of issues with malware? Is this the same server that has DDoS'd us before? This kind of thing, so that we want when these people are making decisions to have all the historical information along with it. Um, I wish we lived in a world where everybody did their jobs in a timely fashion and had lots of time to do them, but we don't. Maybe Jeremy's going to send a message to someone over on the uh, firewall team or over on the perimeter team and they don't get to it for two hours because they were busy. Or maybe this is someone who's on vacation and Jeremy doesn't know. So we have time stamping and we have accountability of actions built into this. So if we send a message over and it isn't got to in a timely fashion, it'll alert Jeremy and it'll escalate. But we'll talk about that a bit in one second. Um, this is one of the big points of what we accomplish in Resilient is what's called playbooks, right? It's correct information on the regulations in your area. So if, for example, we have a release of PCI or HIPAA applicable data, okay, that says, hey, this is people who live in the state of Texas and they have had a release of their HIPAA data. What are the regulations? What are you required to do? Is this a legal matter? Is this something you have to put out a press release? And Resilient is going to know all of these things and it's going to inform people at the proper time. These playbooks should reduce your time to proper action by an awful large volume, right? Sometimes from days to just minutes. And the last is it keeps straight everything you're working on. So, um, you know, as we mentioned, Jeremy may have 10 things going on. Maybe some of them are visible in QRadar or in his firewall screens. And maybe it's just notes he wrote down because he saw something weird or he got visited at his desk. The workflow management is going to allow you to have these kind of answers where, hey, we're seeing a slowdown over here or, oh, we saw a strange pop up on a desktop, that kind of thing that don't have a technical root, that have a root in people or that have a root in a process that's breaking down. Okay, but just kind of as a first example here, and I want to talk about manual workflow. So Jeremy um, gets a malware, pops up in the environment, and this happens all the time, right? So the malware goes through, and you have your McAfee EPO, or your semantic, or your trend go through, and it's sending uh, data to QRadar. And Jeremy sees this data in QRadar, all well and good, right? And he reads this report. And he opens up a ticket in Resilient manually, right? To say, oh, I have a desk that needs to be visited because this is ransomware and something that needs to be addressed on hand. So um, Bob, the security director, is going to want to know about this. Now, this is we don't want Bob running around doing things. We just want to keep him informed. 
And we want Mary from IT operations involved in this because she's got to go over to that desktop and clean that up for the user. So at 12.02 in the afternoon, Jeremy opens a ticket in Resilient, it informs Bob, and at the same time, it knows Mary is the right person to fix it. Now Mary goes through and she does her research and figures out what's going on and sees that we're behind a patch and a server needs to be fixed and after that it has to be rebooted. So she goes down in the server room floor and sees that there is indeed ransomware, cleans it up, fixes the server, and um, closes the ticket with Resilient, okay? And you see this has taken you know a couple of hours because it was difficult and she had to do the research. But this is gonna create that context I mentioned in the last slide. So if we have a problem with a malware on that server again or that malware again, or maybe it was just a weird thing that Mary had to go make a configuration change that no one had thought of. So if that problem recurs, they know that Mary in IT operations is the one that knows the right answer. So any future problems are gonna be easier to fix. And this is basically our straight line manual interaction. Okay, but let's take for a minute and let's talk about a mixed workflow to say that I have something complicated that happens. Maybe I'm getting a denial of service from Romania at the same time I have a malware in the inside that's trying to reach a command and control server, right? This is a lot going on. So, okay, that's great. And uh, all of these uh, various systems reach out to QRadar and they give it a bunch of data and it's at 2.15 in the morning. Great. So Jeremy happens to be there in the middle of the night because he's our third shift guy and sees that there's a terribly complicated problem that started. So the resilient receives the information at the same time he does while Jeremy gets to work, you know, mitigating damage and closing connections and all of this good stuff. The resilient is going to go through and it's going to send a note to the general counsel, Annie, because it's smart enough to spot that this is a data exfiltration. There is a leak of data that's going on out of your environment. Now, Annie has to make some decisions pretty quickly here, right? So Resilient opens up one of the playbooks we talked about, and Annie um, sees that, oh man, there has been a PCI disclosure, and it has been in the state of Texas, and she sees what the rules are and what needs to happen, and how soon after they are informed of the event that they need to make a release of information. So Annie has the pertinent history. Have we seen something like this before? Is this a one-time event? Is this based on a server they knew they needed to replace anyway? So that she has a platform to act quickly to say, hey, we need to change things right now. This is a serious problem. Okay, so at 7.25 in the morning, Bob, the security director, is checking his mail, right? Because he's also not up all night. And um, Bob learns that there is a serious data leak and he learns that um, the general counsel has already been involved so he's going to pull out all the stops and know we have a real problem here of data leaking from the environment. So he makes the best decisions he can based on the case data and the input from Annie and maybe he calls a vendor and maybe he makes some changes in the internet access or maybe he downs services that are normally considered vital because this is a really serious circumstance but Bob makes these decisions based on the fact he has data that they have a real problem in front of them okay so come 7:45 in the morning Bob puts these entries into resilient and it goes over sends to Jeremy and sends to Mary at IT operations now Jeremy's been up all night working on this and he's running around and he knows what the problem is and he's been putting data into the resilient system so that when Mary comes into work in the morning, right, Mary doesn't have to spend an hour and a half with Jeremy on the phone figuring what just happened here and doesn't have to um, recap and take him away from his vital duties because absolutely everything is in this system and she can get to the things she needs to fix. So when we get to 9.20 in the morning, right, these two have been working diligently the last couple of hours. We've had decisions made by management Jeremy and Mary have fixed the problem. The data leak has stopped. Okay, Bob gets to go through and you know check with his sources and make sure that indeed that the system is fixed. We close the tickets up in Resilient. Annie releases a statement, probably written by Resilient, saying, hey, people in Texas, there was a release of information, but we closed up before noon. The amount of data outflow was limited and we created, although there was a problem, a minimum time solve, right? This is the value of a mixed workflow in Resilient, a minimum time solve to a mixed people, process, and technology fix. After this, I want to take a minute and I want to talk about a fully automated response. People go very back and forth in automated response, and I want to let you know this is an option here with Resilient, and especially with Resilient and QRadar. So you have a complicated thing that happens. In this case, let's say it's a denial of service attack. And um, it happens at a very weird time, 3 o'clock in the morning. 
and maybe Jeremy's here and maybe he isn't and maybe your organization doesn't have a Jeremy. But it sends to QRadar, which recognizes this for what it is. It's denial of service, right? It's a bad thing and it's coming from a bunch of sources. Um, it goes to these playbooks that we have up in Resilient and says, we're seeing what is a known denial of service going on from sources on the internet, and it is attacking my databases. Now, maybe you're a business where people start work or they're still working at three o'clock in the morning, but you don't want them to not be able to access the data. So Resilient goes through and it, we have determined responses, and it says, I recognize this is a denial of service. Now, maybe you have a Radware or an F5 that's got a good denial of service engine in it, right? So Resilient goes through and makes the changes without involving a person in the same minute that it was informed by the system to say, hey, there is a problem, and um, there's bleeding, there's bad stuff going on. I have customers that can't get to their data right now. So when Bob, the security director, comes in the next morning, and yes, he received a text or an email or whatever you like at uh, three o'clock in the morning, but he's not going to get in until quite a while after that, because like a lot of us, he sleeps and likes to spend time with his family and stuff. So Bob can um, see that the, there was a problem and that the bleeding has been stopped. So at seven o'clock in the morning when Bob comes into work, 8 a.m., whatever time Bob gets there, he can make these more nuanced decisions and maybe it was just correct already and resilient stopped the attack and everybody's happy. And maybe Bob and Jeremy and now they have to get back together and look at what the problem is, but it's not an emergency at this point. This has become a small problem they need to deal with, not something that is a hair on fire, everybody stop right now. Okay, and this is the kind of automated response, third use case to resilient. And this has been a kind of a day in the life and I don't want you to think these are the only use cases of resilient, but I want you to know that this is a lot of the kind of ideas, the interesting things we can do with these two products in the same environment.